Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology. And today we have a different video. This is the second time I'm making this video, a similar video I had made almost two years back where I had answered a lot of questions about my uh, situation here in Germany and my masters and astrology, spirituality, or my overall life in general, my schedule, my eating habits, and my uh, friends. Uh, and any other area okay so today I shall address some similar questions which I keep getting always so that uh, if you have asked me these questions then you can also find the answer here okay so the primarily 10 topics which people ask me questions that is uh, pertaining to the first is masters in Germany uh, computer science and all this the current job which I have here in Germany then second is uh, some of you have asked about uh, contributing some donation. Uh, I will give you some information regarding that. And third is my schedule. What is my schedule like? What time do I get up and sleep and all this? <laughs> then uh, when did I learn Sanskrit or Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Astrology and all this? Then do I like cooking? Mm -hmm, cooking. Then number six is uh, what about eating meat and onion, garlic and all these things. Then number seven is what about my family, family of astrologers. <laughs> the number eight is maintaining spiritual commitments outside India. The number nine is do I offer paid mentorship? And number 10 is how is Corona treating me? <laughs> all right so these are the uh, major queries and there you go let's start with the first one it job or masters in germany all right and as usual if you are new to the channel and if you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it below and if you want a consultation from me you can always go to my website down in the description box okay and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will surely find him even if Corona exists for eternity. <laughs> All right. So, what is the first question? The first question is okay. So, when did I come to Germany for masters? It was in the year 2015. I got the admit on uh, 9th December 2014 uh, to University of Göttingen for masters in applied computer science, and then I finished my degree somewhere around 2018 and april i submitted the thesis yeah it takes some more time here uh, almost like three three and a half years sometimes uh, people also do it in two years or five semesters some need even up to eight semesters sometimes so for my case i needed six and a half semester so three full years then i submitted and then within three months i got the result and then i needed almost uh, one year so april 2015 uh, 18 I submitted the thesis and then I got the current job where I'm working uh, on April 2019 so it's a bit tough here to find a job and um, many of you have asked me about uh, doing a webinar regarding masters in Germany so if you are interested then please write it down in the comments that you also want to attend this webinar so I will uh, conduct a webinar if I see many people are wanting to join. Uh, it will be around three to four hours. Uh, I don't know how much will be the cost. I have not decided. I have to talk to my uh, team and decide how much should I charge for that. And uh, in that, I shall cover all aspects of masters in Germany and job here and also. And we do not need German here uh, for IT sector. Uh, that's the good thing. We can work in English. And currently, I'm working in a company known as a Media Mart. Media Mart is a company, uh, it's like Amazon, it's like a very big retail company, one of the biggest in Europe. So, you could say it's like the Amazon of uh, Europe. <laughs> so, there uh, I'm working as a big data engineer. Sometimes I do uh, data science work, sometimes I do uh, data engineering work. I'm working in a Google Cloud platform, okay, GCP and Python. and at times uh, different technologies related to networks and you know, different databases so that that's my work and it's almost one year now i started working last year june so now this 29 or this 30th i will be completing one year so it's almost one year and 
yeah so that's it from my company and master site so let's move on to the next question yes so some of you have uh, asked me uh, if uh, there's any place where you can uh, give a donation for the uh, work which I am doing here well yes then you can definitely uh, do uh, I will uh, give the Indian bank details below in the description section and I'll also give the PayPal information the PayPal email address if you wish you can uh, make a uh, donation there for my channel or if you feel you have benefited for it from it and thank you very much in advance for uh, your contribution I would love to uh, have that then the next question is uh, what is your schedule like <laughs> no my schedule is uh, very dynamic like uh, almost every one of you also I guess you know, schedule is never static but I have certain fixed activities uh, with which I do not compromise which which means these are the things which I will do at that specific time only and during no other time of the day and those are the spiritual practices which I do, uh, which I chant uh, mantras in the morning and I do a lot of prayers and I sing some stotrams and some archan also I do. And these things are to be done in the Brahma Murat ideally. So most of the times I'm able to do, but sometimes if it gets very late, then I have to postpone it to maybe 5 a.m. or 5.30 or but most of the times I try to do it around 4.30 or 5, or worst to worst case uh, 5.30 or 6. So I try my best to do it uh, at that time only or unless I have to travel somewhere or uh, you know, unless it's an emergency. In that case, I do it later on, but 99.9% .9 of the times it's in the morning. And uh, after that, I do my own cooking because I don't eat uh, outside food. I cook my own food and then I eat and I then I go to the office well now we are not having office of course but in general I'm saying so around 8 5 a.m. I leave from my home and it takes almost one hour to reach office so I reach office at 9 and then at 5 p.m. I leave eight hours total and then I reach home at 6 6 15 and then I uh, talk to my mother in India and uh, then I take some food again <laughs> and then I read the Bhagavad Gita if I can in the evening or I make these videos videos sometimes I make in the morning if my uh, if I get up earlier then I make the video in the morning itself or else evening time during this time when I'm recording I make the videos and uh, I also do consultations if it is from the West because uh, my 8 p.m. is uh, somewhere day in USA so US clients I can handle in the night in the weekdays and then uh, for India the Indian clients they I do it in the weekends and Friday is home office so I do it on either Friday 4 p.m. my time which is uh, Indian time 7 30 in summers and 8 30 p.m. in the winters uh, or I do it anywhere in Saturday and uh, Sundays I generally don't do any consultation I mean I do if it is required in the worst case but generally I don't prefer doing it on Sundays and uh, yeah that's how my schedule is and yeah when I go go to the office and come from the office so it takes almost two hours so I uh, always keep hearing uh, lectures from my uh, gurus and then I uh, spend the time in the bus like that okay so yeah that's like a proper utilization of my time when I'm uh, because that's a long time two hours of your day and sometimes I have the Bhagavad Gita in PDF form I also read uh, in the bus okay but it's not recommended to do all this in the bus actually but yeah better to do something than not doing anything right or I listen to bhajans and kirtans and all this I do then the next is uh, when did I learn Sanskrit or reading the Bhagavad Gita or Srimad Bhagavatam? So I have not learned Sanskrit from uh, authorized uh, teacher or from any parampara. I have not learned, and um, I want to learn, but then somehow uh, I, it's very difficult for me to find time from my schedule and then uh, to learn Sanskrit again. And uh, that's not required. Also, I mean. Uh, I have also talked with many of my gurus. They have also told me you don't have to waste time learning all these languages. You know, 
like you know sanskrit or any other language you, you should focus on the prime knowledge okay sanskrit is very good if you know but if you many times people ask me oh i don't know sanskrit how can i read bhagavad gita no the english translations are available you don't have to know sanskrit now i i can read sanskrit properly and i can also understand some rules like meanings of some words when they change but you don't have to waste 12 years of your life learning sanskrit and becoming a so called pandit and then not reading the bhagavad gita okay or shrimad bhagavatam so you are a westerner or you are indian or whichever country you belong to whichever language uh, you have okay don't waste your time running behind languages and all this uh, material stuff these are all material okay? language country state all these are useless actually you are going to leave your body one day so there's no need to keep learning sanskrit 12 years you don't have to all right if you are interested and as a passion you can learn but to know the scripture and truths you don't have to learn okay because uh, the english translations are available and life is very short so let's read in whichever language we uh, are comfortable with if you hindi translations are also there so if you are comfortable in hindi if you are very good in reading hindi you don't know english then you can read in hindi you don't have to learn english again 10 years 15 years all right <laughs> so please make the right use of your time Okay, search for translations within your own language, whichever language you know—Hindi, English, Sanskrit, German, or Russian, whichever it is. Okay, so therefore, please make proper utilization. And uh, astrology, I have been studying uh, roughly around the year two thousand two, two thousand four, and two thousand ten. I had gone to Chennai where I met so many gurus, and there, from there, I started reading the Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita, I think, I started in two thousand. 11 end and shrimad bhagavatam i started in 2012 end so it's like i needed one year to finish the gita and then i started reading the bhagavatam again and i had read different sections in the bhagavatam before but it's recommended you uh, read the bhagavad gita before and then you read the shrimad bhagavatam or in, if you are very much interested you can also read parallelly because bhagavatam begins where gita ends so krishna says in the gita that conclusion is surrender unto me but then how do you surrender that is what the shrimad bhagavatam answers okay so just reading the gita is not enough you must i mean it's very good if you are reading but after that you must read shrimad bhagavatam okay so if you are interested to have the links then i will also give it in the description section okay uh, from amazon you can have both the copies Now, yeah, number five is uh, are you very much interested in cooking? You keep posting these recipes once in a while. Yes, I am very much obsessed with cooking. I uh, love to cook, and I cook a uh, nice meal uh, once a week at least. So on Sundays, I cook a uh, very nice meal, and very nice means not very opulent, but uh, I invest a lot of time and I cook nicely. And yeah, that's something which I've been doing somewhere. On from 2003 onwards, I guess you know 2004 it became very intense, and from that time I've been uh, cooking quite vigorously. I would say. Number six, do you eat meat or onion and garlic? Well, uh, I used to eat meat from the year 2010. I stopped eating meat when I went to Chennai. But before that, I used to eat meat. Uh, I used to eat chicken, then mutton, then I used to eat eggs. and fish i never liked and uh, pork i had tasted i think not more than 5 to 10 times in my life because i am from assam guwahati and there pork is very famous so i have also tasted pork 5 um, to 10 times maybe uh, but i never liked pork uh, i always uh, used to eat more of chicken and sometimes mutton and sometimes i used to eat eggs but eggs and fish i used to absolutely hate and lamb and all this i have tasted once or twice maybe in my life and uh, beef and all no never i have never taken beef uh, so that yeah onion garlic of course yeah i i did i stopped taking onion garlic since uh, 2010 and uh, not 10 i would say june 11 2011 that is the time from june 2011 or you could say roughly from end of 2010 okay So 2010 December I last ate meat and then I ate 
uh, onion garlic the last time i guess it was in june 2011 but then the problem is in my home when i go to guwahati then they my parents eat onion and garlic they also eat fish and uh, they don't eat much meat so when i go to home then i uh, cook my own food and uh, yeah my mother cooks but uh, she cooks without onion garlic for me because they are very tamasic and we should not eat that uh, onion garlic especially uh, if we are planning to make any spiritual progress in this life all right so therefore uh, onion garlic is very detrimental in fact uh, my guru used to say Eating onion garlic is worse than eating meat. I mean, he used to be sarcastic and he used to say like this, okay. So therefore, you can uh, try to skip these two things when you uh, eat uh, and you will see a difference. Within three months, you will see your consciousness has changed and you can, you can, you're much happier, you're much better, you're much more positive, okay, because these two are in tamas, tamoguna actually it's very bad actually we should never eat okay they they make us more lazy and now scientifically they have some uh, what do you say now? health benefits but for our overall evolution of the soul it's very detrimental so we should abstain from it okay to whatever extent possible now when i go to india sometimes uh, i have to go to uh, like many times people invite me uh, for lunch or dinner to their home so then uh, i mean I cannot expect that they will not cook without that so they sometimes cook without onion garlic or sometimes they do not cook and if they do not cook then it becomes very difficult for me to say no to them you know they because they cook with a lot of love and affection and reverence so then i have to eat even if i don't want or i don't like or if sometimes some friends they insist too much to go to some restaurant or any other place you know especially here not here in india then I have to eat onion and garlic, but I never eat the raw onion and garlic. That I'll just directly throw. Okay, but if it is there in the gravy, then what to do? But 99.9% .9 we should avoid it. Okay, 1.1% exception can be there in emergencies. <laughs> okay. Then uh, family of astrologers. Uh, no, my family, uh, nobody is an astrologer in my family. <laughs> Uh, in fact, uh, I, I am also just a student of astrology, so I can never claim myself to be an astrologer. Yeah, there was one person, he is like uh, my father, my mother's uncle or cousin uncle. That person knows astrology, but I have not, that, I have not met that person in this life till now. <laughs> and he's already in 70s and he stays in Upper Assam and maybe hopefully in this life I'll see him or meet him once. But uh, no, my family is into government services. My uh, grandfather was the uh, was an officer in the Indian Administrative Service. He was an IAS officer, and he retired as the Secretary of Education Department. And my father uh, retired as the Commissioner and Secretary of Agriculture Department. In 2010, my father retired when I went to Chennai. Okay, so no astrologers or no uh, yoga or Ayurvedic teachers uh, in. No, nobody related to these domains. Okay. It's purely government and uh, yes, it's only government, I think. And my uh, mother has two sisters. They are uh, into uh, this education and they have retired as the principal and uh, one retired as the vice principal and the other one is a principal. Okay. So yeah, education is there and government service is there, but this astrology stuff is not there. <laughs> then number eight maintaining spiritual commitments outside of india so actually it's not very difficult people think it's very difficult but it's uh, it's easy actually because if you have a contact with uh, spiritual community members like i have here many god brothers here uh, in munich i have uh, two of them I, in wangan i have one then in uh, frankfurt i have one then in uh, Bremen, I have one. So these are all people in within Germany. Then in Austria, I have one. Then in London, I have. And in India, there are so many of my god brothers. So if you have good contact with them, then and your gurus, then you don't have to worry. Uh, you can very easily maintain your commitments. So two things are there. One is your sadhana, which you have to do in the morning. And then in weekend, as I said, Sunday, I don't do anything. No consultations, nothing, preferably. Unless the client says it's very urgent. And I can only do it on Sunday, only then I do. But in general, Sunday I spend my 
uh, reading more of scriptures, hearing two lectures, and uh, uh, enriching myself and okay, learning about uh, different uh, scriptural uh, principles. So by by that I uh, can uh, hold pull myself for another week. So that is uh, sadhana. Then uh, one is seva. Seva means doing some service. So for me, like I make these videos where I talk about Gita and Bhagavatam every day almost. So that is like my seva. I do that uh, from my side without any charge. Uh, and that, or you can go to some spiritual community where you can do some seva. That is also fine. No problem with that. Or uh, you can also help in any way, uh, whichever possible. Okay. So that 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 is uh, sadhana. And then there is seva. Then there is uh, satsang. Satsang means associating with members of the spiritual community. So if you're doing these three, then your spiritual life will always boom and bloom. <laughs> one of the three, if it's like a triangle, you see, if one of the three is not very stable, then nah, spiritual life is difficult in Kali Yuga. Okay. And don't maintain association with materialistic people because uh, that degrades us actually. So if anybody uh, watching this video or my videos there, you are uh, very, very much eager to make spiritual progress, then unfortunately, that's a fact of life. You have to stay away from your best friend, even if he or she is uh, your best friend. But if they are not into spirituality and they are too much into mundane stuff, okay. So then that's very dangerous. Okay? So then you have to stay away from them if they are into bad habits like you know uh, they are indulging in um, eating meat or taking illicit uh, wine or you know their their the intoxication or they are indulging in gambling you know, then this betting and all this share bazaar all this nonsense and then if they are indulging in illicit sex or watching pornography or adult material in the internet is very detrimental okay because that will suck your spiritual progress or if they are eating too much outside or roaming with members of the opposite sex uh, like dogs sometimes <laughs> so then you have to uh, cut yourself from their association okay otherwise your spiritual life will be very boring it will be very dry and it will be very damp and you can't practice for very long actually okay so to practice spiritual life for a long time you need a lot of determination which comes when you uh, do two things when you do your own sadhana and do this sadachar and seva properly and stay away from overly materialistic people okay so that's how you know that you are making spiritual progress okay number nine do you offer paid mentorships uh, as of now not but many people have been requesting me so maybe in future i will devise a model where i will uh, be doing a mentorship regarding any area regarding masters in germany or coming to germany settling down or you want me to be your uh, like a mentor for your spiritual life that also could be possible or uh, if you're learning astrology and you want me as your mentor then that is also possible okay but as of now i am not having the time but hopefully in future uh if i make some changes and arrangements then i will be able to do that but at least not now after one or two years at least one or two years okay so maybe after that when i uh, am ready i will announce in my channel okay and number 10 what about corona how is corona treating you so uh, we are in office we are in home office and we are working from home and uh, therefore we are not going to the office now here in germany cases are reducing gradually and hopefully we will go soon to office <laughs> all right so that is from uh, it from my side and uh, Thank you very much for these questions and for any donation that you have made already or even if you have made before then also thank you very much my respects to you for your contribution okay what is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him